Oh, welcome back again. Another day, <laughs> another video. Woo! But there's only two more to go. Yay! So uh, this is the penultimate video on the actual lab, and there's one final conclusion one which we'll sort out uh, hopefully today. So it will all be finished today and ready for delivery on Monday. Or well, actually, maybe may even be loaded onto Minerva on Sunday, which would be great. So um, what were we looking at? Uh, yes, we were looking at. Um, uh, PI control systems and uh, oh, I just fuck up my mouse, uh, mouse. Uh, so let me just get my mouse and uh, right okay so um, what I need to do before we look at anti wind up is just uh, review a few things uh, from the previous lab so that we know where we are and why we're doing what we're about to do so uh, I've set up a few things here um, Right, we know this is the uh, what you'll uh, have as your PowerPoint presentation. So all of these, the things you see here uh, are the results uh, and these results are in that PowerPoint presentation. So here you'll see the pulley ratio of one to two and these are the numbers I got uh, when I redid the test. I did the test after the film just to actually tidy up some of these numbers and uh, make sure they were correct. So there might be slight variations between this and uh, what I was talking on the video, but it's not massive, okay? But uh, so there's the one to two results. Uh, let's see, on the other one, we've got uh, uh, pulley ratio two to one. Uh, those are the results for that. Remember, it's much slower, so we've got more uh, points that we actually took. And similarly, uh, on the one to one ratio, uh, this is our results for that. Um, now then, so what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, I need to look at the images. So I'm going to uh, go into here, file, open. And I took some uh, screenshots uh, of, uh, let's see, of the um, of the proportional integral control, and I'm going to look at these. I'm going to look at the uh, the uh, one to two first. I this is the fastest response system, so the pulleys are set for a one to two ratio, and I'm just going to pull this up. So I hope you can see this, and. What you'll notice here is remember that uh, this uh, center line here is zero. This is channel uh, one and this is channel four. So channel four is the actual result that's actually feeding into the server from a maths perspective. So uh, here we've got our zero line. So that means, and here we've got it uh, going negative um, by quite a small amount. This is one volt per division. So this is a, uh, around about, uh, what, half a volt. Um, and that's like uh, equates, given that this range here can go to minus 1.25 volts or up to plus 1.25 volts, uh, which is the equivalent of um, plus 511 and minus 512 uh, from the reference point of 512 on the DAC, then uh, this number is about a third of the way through. So that's around about two, uh, let's see, about 200, maybe 180 ish uh, as a, an absolute math value which has been turned into an analog value to produce this uh, value here. But what's important is um, what's happening here. Now uh, because channel 4 is used for uh, two different functions it, or it gives the compass position uh, when we're uh, doing um, a test on it. Uh, that's how we got the sawtooth triangle waveform right at the start. And this is what this residue bit here is but this is the actual start uh, point data here. And this is where it actually just sets the DAC to zero. So you've got a known reference before it starts to show you the maths. Now, what you'll notice here is this is actually one volt per division. It never gets anywhere near the um, limit of uh, minus 1.25 or plus 1.25 here. That's actually the uh, south position. That's why it says maximum value here. Um, and so this never saturates. Well, in anti-windup, let's look at the control algorithm for anti-windup. So here's the control algorithm for anti-windup. Let's just go, whoops, uh, can I just uh, uh, go back to here. There was your, uh, your um, proportional integral control system. And you'll see that uh, we've got the uh, K, the proportional part of it. Then we've got the uh, integration part of it. And there's the limiter. Um, but what anti wind up's doing is uh, during these phases, as we've just seen on this uh, drawing 
uh, in here. We've seen that the end result, uh, let's <coughs> go back to oops, uh, here. So this integrator is adding up this error and summing it and um, and then it's actually checking to find out if the limiter needs to be put into place. Now we also know that if we take uh, this value and exceeds 500, uh, by the plus 500 or minus 500, then in fact the, the servo is being saturated. So let's just go back to there. So that's, that's this bit here. Now it's sort of rather fortuitous that the DAC has got a roughly uh, plus or minus 500 uh, voltage, uh, uh, 500 uh, range. So it actually ties very closely with what the actual limiter is required, which is actually the 500 plus or minus 500 microseconds on the limiter uh, on the uh, on the servo drive, which is what it's limited to. So what we're going to see here then is if we just go back to this image. So if this gets down to plus or uh, minus uh, 1.25, then we know that this has actually gone towards 500 plus 511 and minus 512. And therefore that's the saturation just slightly above the saturation point of the actual servo. So you'll notice in a, this is a uh, one to two ratio and you'll notice that in fact it hasn't got anywhere near that uh, saturation point because it's running so fast that the integrator hasn't had a chance to sum up any large numbers. So let's just go back to the uh, integrator here. So it hasn't had a chance to sum up any, uh, any large numbers. Whereas if we actually um, look at um, the uh, one that really does saturate, which is actually the uh, two to one, uh, which is very slow, you'll see on this one, so this is a two to one ratio, and you'll see that there's a massive saturation here. So, uh, so as soon as it started, it started accumulating numbers uh, in the integrator, and it's really struggling uh, to get those. That's the point, there's the zero crossover point, and it's still saturated at this point. And then once it starts to subtract those numbers during this phase, you'll see it actually going in the opposite direction. So it's, it's taken ages to get this back down again to actually get it to a usable number. And then it's saturated on the other side, and then it's actually with its normal parameter. So, and the reason this swing is so large, which is uh, what we're seeing here, yeah, look at, if you look at the time of this, because this is on a, um, a one second per division, so this is working really, really slowly. And so it's actually saying that it's taking so much time to actually get rid of these numbers that were actually put into the integrator that it's actually slowed the whole system down. This way you get these very, very large and long overshoots. So the whole point of anti-wind-up is to try and stop that happening so that you can actually try and get the system to respond in the best possible way. So let's have a look at the uh, algorithm here. So I'm just going to uh, move this out of the way and pull this into here. Now then, what you're seeing here is we've added the anti-windup. And what it's saying, this bit here, it says, well, if there is a difference between these two points, between the limiter, so what goes into the limiter and what comes out of the limiter are different, then take that difference, multiply it by some constant, and actually um, subtract it from the actual integrator itself. And when you do that, what you're doing is taking away numbers from this. So if it saturates, what it's saying is remove some of this error information so it doesn't actually go to such a deep saturation. And so what you're hoping to see is get this to a point where in fact it stays within the uh, normal confines of the five uh, of 500 plus or minus 500 which is a limitation on the server so you try basically you're trying to stop the server from overdriving so that's the purpose of anti-windup and if you look at let's just go back to our uh, one to two uh, image there this is one to two image this is on the two second time base here and uh, you'll notice that there is no saturation here. Now, if there's no saturation, then this will never actually come into play. So anti-windup never occurs if your actual system is uh, not actually into the limit region. And so it's really important to understand that because if we're actually uh, going to run this, uh, for example, on a, uh, this is on a uh, one to two, so there's a very fast response. So on this system, on very fast response systems, anti-windup doesn't really play any part. 
Let us just pull up the um, the one to one because that's when you start to see it coming in. There we go. There's the one to one. So this is response time. This is the actual value that's going into the limiter uh, before it goes into the servo. So this is the actual summation of the proportional component and the uh, integral component. And you'll notice here, there's your start of the curve. There's the start of it here. Um, and the, it's started accumulating the integrator and it's just slightly saturated to see the flat line here. And then it's coming back round, and we've only got this small uh, overshoot. So uh, in this case, the only time the, uh, the um, uh, the, I forgot the name now, the anti-wind-up. The only time the anti-wind-up will start to come into play, which you see here, uh, is actually during this part of the uh, process. And it's actually a really small amount of time. So what it would, would have done, once the anti-wind-up's in, it'll start taking away some of this energy from the integrator to actually slow down the response time. And you're really hard-pressed to actually see see it actually do this on a one-to-one -one basis. Now, the other thing is that once it's done it and it's corrected this, the anti-wind-up never comes into play again because it never saturates. So it only acts for a small part of the process. So the one you're going to really see this significantly on is on the um, one to two, sorry, wrong one, sorry, two to one, that one there. So this is the one where you're going to see the most drastic effect of anti-wind-up because it's going to work almost instantly bringing this value down so that once we can try and get it into this non-saturated uh, region. So it's really important you understand what's going on here. So uh, let's have a look at it from the perspective of, um, of the actual uh, HMI and the software. So let's have a quick look at the HMI for this. Uh, so we're going to go file and uh, let's see screen 10. There we go. So here's the HMI. And the only addition to the HMI now is we've got this new constant called KA. And so we can actually edit the value of KA. And otherwise, everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, all the outputs are the same for channel 1 through to channel 4. Uh, so we've got the error on channel 1, proportional result on channel 2, the integral result on channel 3, and the um, the total result on channel four. And we can edit the anti-wind-up constant uh, by using option three. And to move the compass south, we're using option 10. And then to run the algorithm as before, we're using the, um, uh, the option number one. So let's look at the software for all of this. So here's the software. Uh, once you enter the, I think it's number 10 to get into the proportional integral uh, with anti-wind-up control. I can't remember offhand. Let me just uh, uh, have a quick look. Uh, let's see, go on, somewhere in here, 10, oops, it's not it. It's in here somewhere. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, it's right at the start. Sorry about this. Uh, let me just, this is all the anti-wind-up stuff. Right up here, a lot of software in here. Uh, there we go. Uh, so taking option 10 from the main menu takes us to the anti-wind up uh, stuff. And let's just go down here back to the proportional uh, and the, there we go, <clears throat> proportional integral. And now a lot of these routines could have been uh, made a little bit more efficient by uh, making them common processes, but I want to divide them up so that you actually could see the software as uh, for what it uh, really was. So uh, let me just find the uh, software again. I should have uh, done this. There we go. Right. So by choosing option 10 from the main menu, we've got to proportional integral uh, with Andy Windup. And here you'll see all the options we just discussed. Uh, one, two, three. So that's from uh, this screen. So there they are. One uh, through to 11 on here. And we've got, uh, let me just uh, remove this so we can extend this a little bit. Oops. Uh, there we go. Uh, one through to eleven uh, is the are the options for the um, inter proportional integral control system with anti wind up, and uh, then we've got the actual um, starting of the algorithm. So this is actually when you press option one, you've got to run the actual algorithm, and this is what this is. So this is the same as the previous one, 
but the major difference here is the anti-windup. So this is where we get our compass data from, we check it to make sure it's okay, and uh, this is the key bit here, risk result proportional integral uh, with anti-windup calculation. So we're just going to go and look at that, and uh, this is it here. Now then, what you'll notice is we now have a, a global anti-windup um, uh, saturation value, and that's actually taken away from the error. So we subtract it from the error, uh, so that because that's a signed value, so we're actually subtracting that from the uh, error. So this is actually sitting in here, like uh, there, and uh, and we perform the same rest of the calculation, but the the actual calculation, what we're doing here is we're looking at the, uh, trying to find out, is there an actual difference between the uh, limiter and uh, the input of the limiter and the output of the limiter, i.e. we're looking at this bit in here. So this bit here is actually being performed by this software here. And what it's saying is that if there is a difference, then um, it means that in fact the uh, limiter has been saturated and therefore we need to create this uh, value of the anti-wind-up saturation value, which is actually what's in here. Now also notice that that's multiplied by a constant uh, Ka value, uh, and that is the, oops, wrong one, that is this bit here. So what we're doing is taking the result of that, and uh, we're going to multiply it by Ka, and then change that value uh, going into the integrator. So, uh, and also note that if this is zero, there's zero difference between here, this is zero, therefore it does nothing. And therefore, as far as this is concerned, it's looking pretty much like this when there is no saturation. Whereas if there is saturation, it's going to look like this. Okay, so uh, I hope that's uh, clear. So I just want to go briefly through these uh, images again. So let's just open, so the this is the, um, let's see, we'll go for the one to two, which is the high speed one. Whoops, cancel that. Uh, file, uh, open, and uh, let's see, the one to two. Uh, don't save, okay, right. So this is the one to two, and remember, these values were taken from the, the this, so the K, the uh, proportional and the time constants were taken from the table as per uh, this. So this has been loaded with a 336 um, millisecond time constant for the integrator and 0.72 is the K value. So that's the image that you're seeing uh, here. So that's the results of that. And similarly, if we open the uh, one to one, uh, so this is the one-to-one, -one, and here the values were taken from here. So we've got 296 milliseconds is the integration time, and two is the proportional constant. And so that's what was loaded into this uh, image. And then just looking at the uh, long one, which is the two-to-one. So this is the very long one, and this was loaded with uh, the two to one here. So this had 296 milliseconds as the integration time and 4.4 seconds as uh, its um, uh, K value. And so just that's just to uh, reaffirm what's going on. And this is the, these are the values we're going to use when we actually do the next test so that you can actually see this. So uh, when we're actually running this uh, in a few minutes, uh, we're actually going to uh, be using these values. And so this is what you would have seen um, without the uh, anti-wind-up uh, in place, okay? And we can actually switch the anti-wind-up on and off so we can repeat these images uh, when we do the, the actual practical experiment. Okay, so uh, that's it for this um, video and we'll uh, get on and uh, make the last video.